Good morning, Gospel Light Baptist Kids. So today we're going to be talking about Brave Queen Esther. Our verse for today is Psalm 118, 6. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? So in our lesson, we're going to be talking about Esther and how she stands up for her people. She She's going to stand up for her people even if it means that she might get killed doing so. God put Esther in this position because this was the task that he wanted her to do. So no matter where where God puts us, no matter wh which position God puts us in, we have to know that the Lord is on our side and we shouldn't fear because he's with us and he's going to protect us. So... This is a great memory verse for you guys to remember that God is not going to leave you. Now, before I continue, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we pray that you give us wisdom, Father, and we pray that you help us to learn something from Esther, Lord, as we continue to read her story this week and next week, Father. Um, and we pray that you just protect us on this day, Lord, and help us to... Uh, honor you today and keep a good testimony in Jesus name. Amen So Hadassah was a little orphan girl. She didn't have a father and she didn't have a mother Both had died and she probably more than once cried I wish I had someone who loved me and I wish there was someone I could love Well, there there was someone and that would be her Jewish cousin Mordecai Come and live in my home. He told the little Jewish girl you will be just like a daughter to me. So he changed her name to Esther, which means star. Esther was very happy living in her cousin's home. Sorry if my arm's in the way, but. Now she had a family who loved her and took care of her. Esther was quick to obey. She was also kind and generous. And everyone who met her loved her. She worked hard at home while her uncle worked in the, the king's household. Esther grew into a very beautiful young woman. One day, King Ahasuerus... Oops. <laughs> ...gave a great party. He wanted to show off his beautiful palace and his riches. The celebration lasted for a week and all the government aides and army officers were invited. Later, the king gave a special party and invited both servants and officers. The guests sat on gold and silver benches in the palace garden where the party was held. Drinks were served in golden goblets and the people drank all the wine they wanted. On the last day, when the king was quite drunk, he said to his servants, Bring my beautiful queen Vashti with her royal crown on her head so that all my guests can see her beauty. So, what this means is that the king was not aware of his surroundings because he drank alcohol. And so, we're not supposed to drink alcohol. If somebody ever offers you that, you always say no because that, um, that makes you unaware of what is happening. So, he, asked the, he wants to show off his beautiful wife, so he asked the queen to come. But the queen said, tell the king, I don't think it's a good idea and I won't come. So she really doesn't want to come right now. And so the king was angry. The queen, the queen disobeyed the king. So he asked his advisors what to do about it. And they all said, get rid of her, find someone else to be the queen. These are the things that they told him. The king listened to their advice and decided to choose another queen. He sent out the command that the most beautiful woman be brought into the palace. When Mordecai heard the king's announcement, he thought of Esther. Bloop. I am sure she is the most beautiful girl in the land, thought Mordecai, and not only is she beautiful to look at, she is kind and generous. At first, Esther may have objected. Uncle, I can never become a queen, she might have said. Besides, I am a Jew, she told Mordecai. You don't have to tell anyone that you're a Jew, her uncle told her. 
So Mordecai wants her to keep this a secret. So he's like, you don't have to tell anyone because she's Jewish and she could get in big trouble if they found out that she was Jewish. So Esther said she would do as Mordecai suggested. She joined the other beautiful women at the palace who wished to become queen. The man in charge of the women was very imp of the women was very impressed with Esther. She was given special beauty treatments and special food to eat. When the king saw Esther, he knew right away he wanted her for his queen, and he placed a crown upon her head. And now she lived in the palace and was a very important person. Soon afterward, the king appointed a man called Haman to be prime minister. He was the most powerful official next to the king himself. Everyone was supposed to bow before him, but Mordecai wouldn't do this. I am a Jew, he said, and I only bow before God. Haman's pride made him furious, and he decided to get rid of all the Jews. He was not a kind man, but he was a very clever one. So because Haman is, um, is being prideful right now, he's upset because Mordecai doesn't want to bow to him, which that's a good thing because the only person that we should bow to is God. So he's going to try to convince the king to get rid of all Jews. Haman said to the king, There is a group of people who refuse to obey the king's law. If you agree, may I issue a decree that they be <clears throat> destroyed? <laughs> the king agreed this is the thing to do. So Haman sent out letters to every part of the kingdom announcing every Jew would be killed on a certain day. <laughs> so, now he's thinking, Haman is thinking, um, I will get, he's, like, he's finally going to get rid of Mordecai. He's thinking, now I will get rid of Mordecai. When the Jews heard about the letters, they didn't know what to think. They cried, they fasted, which means they didn't eat, and they prayed. Bloop. They were in a desperate situation that only God could control. So they're right. This is, a, this is a situation that only God can control. And I love that instead of sitting around and doing nothing, they prayed and they fasted. And they're communicating with the Lord. And that's something that we should do in time of trouble. And in, when we're not in trouble, we should always communicate to God. And just spend time with him, you know, and that's what they're doing here. And that's, that's having a relationship with the Lord and being Christians that being a Christian is about having a relationship with God. You know, you can't just go to church and just not like, you know, follow God's law and you can't do like, you know, what you want. And so you have to have a relationship with him, read your Bible, pray to him, Follow his law. Follow what God tells you to do. Turn your life around for him. Just like um, with your siblings or with your friends or with your even with your parents, you know, you have a relationship with them. You're constantly checking up on them, talking with them, um, with your family members and, uh, or with your friends or someone that you really care about. Maybe, maybe there's something that, you know, makes them uncomfortable. So you being like the loving friend that you are for them you don't like you try not to do that thing that makes them uncomfortable because you care about them and so in a way it's kind of like that with God so see God gets sad when we don't follow his law because he knows that if we were to follow his law and follow his rules that that's good for us so if we don't follow his rules obviously in the end we're just going to be hurting ourselves and we're going to be making God upset because he doesn't like seeing us that way. And God obviously doesn't like it when we, you know, disobey him. So we have to learn how to have a good relationship with the Lord. And just like these people here, in time of trouble, they, that's what they were doing. They were communicating with him. So one day, a servant told Esther her uncle was wrapped in sackcloth and crying in the street. She said to her servant, find out what is wrong. And finally, she found out that um, they were planning on killing all the Jews. And so, Mordecai sent to word to Esther that Haman was angry 
because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him. That's why he wanted Jews killed. And I love also that Mordecai, like, instead of being a chicken and cowarding and being like, okay, you know what, I'm going to bow down to you because I do not want to get killed. I like that he's still being faithful to God and trusting in God to handle the situation. So um, Mordecai is going to now ask Esther to speak to the king about this manner. And obviously she was nervous. She's thinking, she's telling him, she's like, oh no, no one should go before the king without an invitation. I could be killed. Do you think you won't be killed just because you live in the palace? Mordecai said, who knows? Perhaps you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So he's basically saying like, maybe this is, this is like um, the reason why you're here because of the situation. You know, God always puts everything into plan. God always has a plan for everything. So we always just have to trust in him. And Esther wanted to help her people. So she goes, pray for me. So she's asking him to pray for him because she wants to help her people. So she goes, I will try. So we can't always understand why God puts us in certain jobs or positions, but perhaps it has to do with the fact that, that God needs us in this certain place at a certain time for a reason. And so just like Queen Esther, um, she is, she's obviously, she's now the queen and this is a good time for her to be able to try and uh, save her people. So next week we're going to talk more about that and see what happens. And I really enjoyed this lesson. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. Um, and hopefully, um, throughout this lesson of Queen Esther, you learn a lot about her and how she stands up for her people. So yeah, okay, so now we're going to pray, and then we're going to end the lesson. Um, Lord, thank you for this lesson. I pray, Father, that you help the kids to um, be brave in times of in times where normally one would be scared, Lord. Um, help them to know that you're there and to have faith in you, Lord, to trust in you, that, you're, that you are in control of the situation, Lord. Um, and just give them courage to do what is right, Lord. So I pray this for them, Father. In Jesus' precious and holy name, Lord, amen.